What's scarier than a Komodo dragon? How about a Komodo dragon that's about twice the length of a car? This massive monitor lizard roamed Australia during the last ice age and was even around when the first humans arrived. This is the largest lizard to ever live, the lost lizard king of Australia, the Megalania. Hi, I'm Talia Lowy Mary, and this is Paleologic. There's no debating that Australia is full of creatures that want you dead. But looking back into the ancient history of this continent, you'll find a whole new level of deadly, gigantic beasts. It's no secret that I love learning and talking about the natural world. And if you're watching this, it probably means you do too. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about my favorite 24-7 wildlife and natural history channel. Love Nature is a wildlife and nature brand that brings audiences powerful stories about the natural world. They have an award-winning library of 4K natural history series and documentaries available for viewing on cable TV and streaming platforms in over 130 countries. I was able to follow orphaned orangutans as they learn survival skills at a unique sanctuary, track three wild dog packs in a wildlife haven, experience fascinating stories of survival by Africa's best known creatures, and so much more. Watch Love Nature today. Find out how in the link below, or catch up on YouTube where Love Nature releases five plus videos a week. Varanus priscus, otherwise known by the badass moniker Megalania, was a giant monitor lizard that lived in Australia 50,000 years ago during the Pleistocene. And during this period, Australia was chock full of megafauna. Examples of these gigantor species include Zaglossus hackadai, an echidna the size of a sheep, Diprotodon optatum, a relative of the wombat that was the size of a hippo, Thylacoleo carnifex, the marsupial lion and Procoptodon golia, a 10-foot-tall kangaroo. But when it came to giant lizards, Megalania was king. In fact, as far as we've discovered, Megalania is the largest lizard to have ever walked the Earth. The largest lizard living today, Varanus komodoensis, otherwise known as the Komodo dragon, is likely the closest living relative of Megalania. While a Komodo dragon averages about 70 kilograms and can grow up to 3 meters long, Megalania might have weighed up to 2,000 kilograms and reached lengths of up to 7 meters long. Using Komodo dragons as the bar, scientists believe that Megalania could have run 3 meters per second or 10 kilometers per hour. This may not sound like a lot, but when you're being chased by a 7 meter long, 2,000 kilo carnivore, it's plenty fast. Running would have helped them in pursuit of their prey. It's not known for certain what they ate, but scientists believe they chowed down on large mammals like kangaroos, as well as snakes, birds, and other reptiles. Basically, Megalania ate whatever it could sink its knife-like teeth into. A study examining the skulls of these lizards suggested that, like the Komodo dragon, Megalania possessed large serrated teeth and was likely able to deliver a venomous bite. The venom would have caused the prey to bleed out and send them into shock. We're still not 100% sure if they were venomous, but if they were, that means we can add largest venomous animal to ever live to Megalania's list of credentials. Whether or not Megalania was mainly a predator or a scavenger is still hotly debated, but one study suggests that given its similarities to the Komodo dragon, with a combined arsenal of serrated teeth and likely venom, it was probably a predator. If they had toxic bites like the Komodo dragon, that would explain how Megalania was able to take down such large prey, despite having relatively weak skulls and low bite force. Varanids, otherwise known as monitor lizards, are thought to have evolved during the late Cretaceous, a little under 100 million years ago. These ancient species would have crossed into Australia from Asia, 
and evolved into the monitor lizards we know today. The first fossils of Megalania were found by Sir Richard Owen in 1858 in deposits near the Condamine River in eastern Australia, although they likely didn't live in riverside habitats. Scientists believe Megalania lived in forests, woodlands, and possibly also grasslands all over Australia. Fossil evidence has been found in almost all Australian states and territories. Humans showed up in Australia during the Pleistocene as far back as 50,000 years ago during the time of megafauna like Megalania. Unfortunately, many of these sites that these early humans occupied are now lost underwater. During the Pleistocene, the polar ice caps were fluctuating dramatically in size, causing global weather to rapidly shift between cold, dry periods and warmer, wet intervals. During the dry periods, the sea levels would fall and open up land bridges to the north with New Guinea. When the warm, wet periods would come, these land bridges would sink back underwater. Any human settlements in these areas were then lost to the sea. Megalania had its lizard physiology to thank for its ability to survive these climate fluctuations. This is because monitor lizards eat very large meals in one sitting sometimes upwards of 80% of their body weight. They digest slowly and can survive on just a single feast a month. This infrequent feeding means that Megalania could outlast other carnivores that needed to feed more often during times of scarcity. So if they were such tough survivors, why aren't there still Megalania hanging out by the Sydney Opera House? Well, there are a number of theories about what caused the mass extinction that killed off Australia's megafauna. Some postulate that it was climate change that brought down these giants. However, this hypothesis is becoming more highly contested. Fossil evidence suggests that megafauna populations fluctuated with the changing climate, but that it wasn't the main cause of their extinction. The extinction of Megalania was likely caused by the arrival of humans in Australia. It's not exactly clear how people killed these megafauna, but numerous theories exist. Some theories suggest that overhunting, especially of juveniles, could have caused populations to collapse. Diseases carried by humans could have also infected native animals. Another theory is that human-made fire could have destroyed megafauna habitats. There is still so much left to learn about megalania. The fossils we have are fragmented, and no one has ever found an entire skull or skeleton. But with every new fossil that is found, this massive lizard king becomes a little less lost in time. So what should we talk about next? Drop your suggestions in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for coming along on this journey through time. I'll see you later.